Really appreciate it. And uh, I want to I wanna really uh, just to say uh, how amazed I am with the community and the response that we've got and what we've been able to do in the last few months uh, with the different bills and and particularly the testimony that, that has come and the education and the knowledge, you know, it's really, really been inspiring to uh, just see people really starting to understand what's going on. When uh, this started, in about January, I first heard about it, called the first meeting, and nobody really knew what was going on. And uh, so then we went to uh, Paley Defense Fund, Pauli Kapu, was the first place I went, because when we did this before, 20 years ago, they led the, they led the fight, and I didn't know who to go to. And uh, so he, he helped us get started, and then uh, Punapono got start, uh, formed in March, and since then, uh, we've seen what's gone on. So we really, we really have come a long ways, and we have a long, a lot more, a long ways to go. We still have a lot of things to go. Obviously, we're up against, uh, you know, a, a huge project here. Uh, you probably read the paper uh, last week Sunday where they talked about all the different properties that are being leased uh, in Opie Cow and in uh, Four Corners and Pohoiki. So there, there's about, we hear, we hear there's about 20 companies. We don't really know. A lot of that is proprietary information. So they don't, they don't talk about it. Like even Avalor, when we found out, I went to a meeting with Avalor at the, for the uh, Opie Cow property. And it's a 500 acre property up in Opiikau that they're trying to lease. But at the meeting, um, Dean, Dean Sadamoto, I think is the project manager, he said that uh, they actually are leasing other properties. And when we asked him where, he wouldn't tell us where. And so we know, we know there's a lot of other companies too that are leasing the large, a lot of the large lots, you know. I don't know if it's all of the large lots, but a lot of the large lots are being leased. And, Part of that is because there's a, a huge amount of money coming out of the federal government through the Department of Energy for green green projects, and geothermal is seen as a green project. So there's all this money available for these companies, and we're going to be paying. Uh, you know, taxpayers are paying a lot of these costs for this exploration. So it's kind of a pay-to-play. They don't have a lot to lose. They have a lot of political support. Um, and uh, so we're, that's what we're up against. Um, what we've been able to do is, uh, I don't think they were, they were expecting Puna. And uh, you know, so what we've been able to do in the face of that, yeah, and, uh, but this whole thing is about to change now. We're gonna, we've had a really, really wonderful special county council that has gone to bat for us like, like I have never seen before. And that now the election's changing, and we have new county council members that we're going to have to educate again. And the, le the legislature is getting ready to start, so we're going to be having to move to the state level because the root of the problem actually goes to uh, Act 55, which is the Public Land Development Corporation, and Act 97, which repealed the subzones and took the county permitting process away from the county. So. Basically, the permits for these new projects will be coming out of the state. So we have to move now to the state. And also, we're looking at litigation and different things when, when those issues come up. So I just wanted to kind of get you guys up to speed on that. Um, we're uh, we're going to be up, up, up uh, picking up our outreach. We're trying to build alliances with other different groups. So if you guys, anybody's connected with the different groups on the different islands, on all these different islands, these are home rule issues, and a lot of the different islands have their own issues with the Public Land Development Corporation, or Big Wind, or, or whatever it is. All these kind of developments where they're coming into communities, and they're not allowing the communities to participate in, in the development is happening all over. So we're trying to build alliances so we can have a stronger voice and build a political base, a voting block, and because uh, that's really what we're going to have to do besides the litigation. Uh, so we're working on that. Anybody wants to help with that? We also, um, you know, we're, we're doing these house studies. We're working on getting a house study. They're putting up roadblocks. They're trying to stop it. 
And it's really amazing that, you know, they want to insist there's no health impacts from geothermal, but they won't just help us do the house study. Now, instead, we asked for $200,000 to do a house study. Instead, they hired uh, Peter Adler, who is, uh, was the mediator back in Trent created this whole problem back 20 years ago, to do a study of the study. And they gave him $50,000 to, to do this. So we have, I'm going to be on that panel. And I want to introduce you to some of the members of Punapono. There's uh, Suzanne Wakeland, Wakeland over here. She's a PhD in physics. And, <laughs> and then we've got Tom Travis. Where you at? Tom Travis in the back. Tom is a, a, a nuclear submarine commander, and he's a nuclear engineer. Not what you'd expect in Pune. And then we have Paul Kaikendal right there. And Paul is a computer software uh, specialist. Ran a, was working for a big software company. Barb, Barb Cuttons, right back in the back. She's a, an, event, an event coordinator from New Zealand. And uh, we've got, um, I, I can never pronounce her name, I'm gonna call her Kat. We have Kat, <laughs> where you at? There's Kat, Katrina, Katrina, I'm sorry. <laughs> I always do that. And, and Gary. Hey! Carrie, I'm sorry. <laughs> Carrie Marks. Please, please take a bow. Occupy Hawaii. And Carrie, Carrie has been amazing. She has videotaped every meeting for months and months and gets them up on YouTube. She has a YouTube channel at Occupy Hawaii. So if you want to review any of the meetings, and she goes to the mayor's energy meetings. She goes to all these obscure meetings where they're trying to do these things that nobody knows about, and she videos them, makes them really nervous. And so we, we have a record of all that stuff. And Laura Travis, we have Laura Travis. I don't see her. Oh, in the back, back there. Thank you, Laura. And Diane Thomas and Jean Thomas down here. And when we, when we first got started, we did the PowerPoint with the Paley Defense Fund. Diane Thomas did the PowerPoint. It was a really amazing job. And it really started the whole ball rolling. That PowerPoint was great. And Jeff Last. And Jeff Last has got the boards in the back. And he's our education specialist. And he's been with us since way back in the original Big Island Rainforest Action Network. He, Big Island Rainforest Action Network. He's uh, he's going to have a market. He's setting up a booth at the Makuu Market to do this information every Sunday. We're we're going to be looking for people to help with that, and we have some other things we need help with. We also have a health survey form. I started talking about that earlier. If anybody has health health issues that they want to get in front of Adler, please fill out one of the health forms back there. Um, and all in the back corner back here and also we're looking for grant writers we, we, we want to do this we're looking to fund our we're looking to fund our health study ourselves so we don't have to have our hand out and, and go jump through all these hoops at the county that they're putting us through if anybody has experience writing grants we have places to go to, for the money we just want to uh, do it right when we go the first time so please let us know if you have experience with that we're also going to do events we have um, December, this Saturday, I think it's December 1st, we're going to be at Uncle Robert's Market. We'll have, yeah, and we're going to have a booth there. And I know Harry Kim will be speaking there also, and a lot of good people will be down there. And then December 20th, we're going to be at the Hawaiian Sanctuary. We're going to announce the music. I, I think we're going to have some really good music, but we haven't got it lined up yet. So we're, anybody that can help with that kind of stuff, events, please also sign up. If you've signed up to help us before uh, and it hasn't got anywhere, please uh, don't give up. Come back, sign up again. We really do, in the back corner, have sign-up sheets and we'll, we're, we could use some help. 
So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get to the speakers now. First, we've got Polikapu Deadman from the uh, Pele Defense Fund. And like I said, he led the fight before all the litigation, uh, all the Rainforest Action Network from whole, uh, San Francisco all came through Polikapu. can do is give you a, a more or less a native perspective on this whole thing. Uh, geothermal and how it all started. Uh, really started from up at Volcano where Pool started. That's where they proposed uh, with Campbell Estate uh, right next to National Park. Of course you had the community association there against it. So there was a contested case going on. But it was missing the native component, the whole thing. It was science against science. So uh, we got involved on the native side, looking at what uh, impacts that desecrating religion would do on a race of people. We tried to get that as something uh, we thought was legitimate, and it still is. But um, history has it where we've all become Christians, and uh, a lot of us are still hanging on to traditions. So that was our argument and our point of view. So while we were in the court case on a contested case that we got involved with, the very beginning of geothermal going to the permitting stage, um, Tutupele erupted. She blew up pool all right in the middle of their plans. So they had to uh, regroup themselves and then they went for a land swap. So they went down to Wild Kerry Opuna, which was a uh, cabal land and they swapped it with the public so it becomes our land and uh, they became doing geothermal development on it we were losing all our rights to these lands, our gathering rights all the people lived around Wild Kelly which starts from Volcano all the way to Kalapana all the subdivisions bordering Wild Kelly so everybody was using the forest and a lot of it were traditional practice in hunting and gathering of medicines and a lot of people from the areas we're doing that all their life. And then you see of, uh, you know, the migration and the new people coming into Hawaii and being born here. Two or three generations have adopted a lot of the, the customs and practices. So the gathering of the forest started to become something that everybody wanted to do and everybody was doing it and practicing. So it wasn't just a Hawaiian argument. It's, it's going to be a benefit for everybody. All the times we have uh, issues that we go and fight for access to this and access to that, when we win, it's a benefit. There's no sign they go up and say, Hawaiian only. Everybody gets to enjoy what we have to fight for. But we have to raise those issues. Not, government's not looking out for us. As you can see, if you're paying attention to Hawaii and its history, it's not about government looking out for the interests of Hawaiians. As you can see, as I said, though, so religious became, religion became really important. Well, a spiritual understanding of how we live on the islands and our connection to what we look at religion or our spiritual beliefs to nature. I think all religions started with a nature foundation. I don't know how they all got lost and went their own ways, but we're still trying to keep those traditions. And in Hawaii, I didn't have to make up Pele, it was there. You know, it was traditional, it was dances, it was art, it was, it was song, it was something real to a race of people. So I just stood up as Penn Defense Fund to stop and say that I had a right as a being above does when you do impact studies on things, that I had a right with my religion that geothermal was a psychological really bad effect on what it was how you alter theologies and beliefs and how desecrating is that and how you can just do it. Well, like I said, in Hawaii we don't have too many traditional practices. And all our spiritual places or heiaos that are well known are owned by the national parks or the state. I think we're the only race in the United States where we don't own our church. It's owned by some government agency or some private hotel. And uh, as a vet, I 
thought I fought for the freedom of that. I thought I fought for my right to believe the way I did. And I'm not talking about Hawaiians who are assimilated in the Western world and are not brought up with traditions and customs. And they seem to be using them more. And they themselves use themselves more to speak up against their own kind. And you know that already. And that's the sad part of how instead of we yield to one another with respect in front of all these people, no, we ridicule. We get ridiculed by the one who don't believe anymore. Not by saying, I didn't practice, I wasn't brought up with it, so I respect it. The boss would be standing against the wall and let the Hawaiian desecrate the other Hawaiian. And that's been going on for a long time. I just want you people to know that there are Hawaiians out there in this world, on these islands, that still believe in their traditions and will stand up for them. We need all assimilate. And I think the track record speaks for itself about what really is Christianity to nature beliefs. And it really doesn't fit here. It was all about nature. I think if we wanted that understanding of Christianity, it would have been done before you got here. Yeah. Yeah. I think we understood it enough that we were part of what was here, and we still want to be part of what was here. There is no extra Hawaiian, no extra Hawaiians. We're in. If we're going to pass through this lifetime, if we're not going to defend and protect who we are, at least show some moral integrity about it. It's shame, shame on us. I'm just saying that there's some of us that still are hanging out and believe it, and you have to know that. You cannot go around in Hawaii thinking that we all gave it up. You'll see the ones that have done that, but we all do. Okay? And I really appreciate working with all the people in this whole struggle against you, Colonel, saying that it's not a Hawaiian's problem. I mean, create an energy problem. But they'll go ahead and desecrate and do something that I think is sacred, sacrilegious because of some energy problem. I mean, we were nature believers from the mountain to the top to the ocean. We had ecosystems at each level that were part of our traditions and practices. We're losing all of that. You know, there isn't much. The hardest thing for an Hawaiian today to be is one. You gotta understand that. We cannot really be ourselves in our own environment. And I don't know where else I'm supposed to go to be a Hawaiian and act like one. When the ones that live here don't even do it anymore. It's really important to keep the focus. And it's important that you know that some of us are still keeping the focus. And it's just, there's no Hawaiian word for odds. So we just have to do and be what we are, and there's no extra ones, so I'm proud of who I am. I'll defend my integrity and my moral integrity when something goes against my beliefs and traditions. I think if the next generation don't see us standing up for these principles and morals, and the people around don't see us do it, then nobody will care. And government, to me, are very more responsible. They got an obligation to do the fair thing. It's, you know, uh, we just filed a lawsuit for the hunting against the LNR. They're fencing off lands and poisoning with rodent poison and killing all the pigs between fences. Things that I grew up to live with and eat. State lands. Now, three million acres is now fenced off for science. It's for science. Let's protect a bug, let's protect a bee, let's protect a flower. Well, fence around those things, man. Not 12,000 acres and then kill all the pigs and get them up, man. Our future, our subsistence, our way of life. I mean, and they use my tax money to fight me back. You know, I mean, where is that? Or where is government's responsibility? How is it and how are they doing it? I'm just saying, uh, and have an opportunity to tell you, and I'll tell you as long as I live on this island, about how we believe and what geothermal is. It's a bad thing, 
flosses a lion, it's a bad thing. As a lion who breeds 